Even I struggle with mixing sub basses to make it pop out from speakers like your phones and normal headphones because it's little difficult to get a good sounding sub bass without having to boost the whole thing up and mess up your mix. Now it's literally very difficult for such speakers to produce low frequencies. It's physically impossible in fact. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at two of my best ways on how I mix subs, subscribes and make it more thick and crisp in your mix. All right, peeps. So here we are in Logic and I have a small chord progression which is going on. Uh, let's just hear it once. That's about it. Nothing fancy, just some simple chords on piano, pads and a drum loop that is going on. Let's just create a sub bass and uh, this chord progression is in the key of G minor, if you're wondering. So let's go ahead with chords per se. Yeah, just simple sub bass. And if you're wondering how to make a sub bass, it's pretty simple. Just add an, a sine wave on one oscillator, bring it down an octave put another square wave in another oscillator, you can essentially put any kind of wave, triangle or a saw wave, and feed both of the oscillator into a filter. I, this is how I do it, just on, on, on an analog 12 dB reduction low pass filter, and I've brought down the cutoff and put a bit of resonance and a bit of drive, just to give that grit. So let's just hear it once. I know, all over the place. So let's just bring in the our mixer here. And how I go about this is I kind of drop all of the levels of the channels, the instrument channels, and start from zero. So it's kind of like a blank canvas. Let's start by mixing with the piano. I think I'm happy at that level. pads are nice in the background. Let's bring in the drums. That's also fine. Now let's mix in the sub. What I've done is I've kind of mixed by ear and it completely depends upon uh, your level of understanding of the various audio frequencies. And here is where it gets interesting. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a send channel for the bass. So let's just create a bus and uh, let's just bring in the level. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a bit of distortion uh, it can be any distortion in your DAW, just put some kind of a distortion and put the tone at somewhere around 1000 hertz because I think uh, when I mix the sub basses in at that tone, it kind of pops out in your normal speakers more and then start kind of mixing in and dialing in the drive. Now that's too much. So what I do is I kind of bring down the level of the send channel and I just push a notch. That's about right. I think I'm happy with that. So what this does is sort of pushes the middle frequencies for the sub bass which are more susceptible for your normal speakers like your phone speakers and your headphones normal everyday user headphones and it kind of pops out much better in the mix so that's one way of mixing in your sub bass i use a send channel and i put a distortion now you can go ahead and eq the send channel as well get rid of all of the low frequencies and the highest. So if I just wanna put an EQ here, let's just go ahead and see how it kind of shapes up. 
So I cut off all of the lows up till kind of like 35. Now who's the middle frequencies? You remember I kind of put the tone at 1000. So let's just boost this a bit. The effect is pretty subtle, but it kind of really helps in popping out that sub bass in your headphone speakers and your phone speakers. So the first way is pretty fine and sits well with most producers, or if you're really good at mixing just by your ear or have found a magic pill to cure your ear fatigue. But usually using a pink noise is kind of more like a technical sonic reference way to mix your sub basses in a track. And why pink noise? because it correctly represents on how your ear perceives various frequency in a frequency range. So that's why we use pink noise to kind of mix uh, various tracks and most importantly, sub bass here. So what I'm gonna be doing is I've, I've created an, another auxiliary channel and I'm gonna be putting a test oscillator. So this is where you want to have some kind of a test oscillator that can produce pink noise in your door. I have Logic, so I have a test oscillator here and I'm gonna be setting this to pink noise at minus 14 dB. And mind you, just a disclaimer, if you have your volumes turned all the way up, just bring it down a notch because this is gonna sound a little harsh. Just like that. So what I have is a channel EQ on the stereo with an analyzer spectrometer turned on. And this is just the pink noise. Now you have to aim at dialing down all of the instruments way back to zero levels. And now what you want is all of the instruments levels to poke a wee bit above that pink noise waveform and then dial it down a notch. So let's just go ahead one by one with all of the instruments and notice whenever the instruments kind of poke through the waveform on the spectrometer, uh, you just need to dial it down a couple of dBs. So now I think it should sound more balanced. Let's just hear it once again. Much better. Uh, this is not a rule of thumb on how you wanna mix it with the pink noise, but it kind of gives a good reference. And then you can go ahead in every instrument and set your levels accordingly. You can also make use of a mix of both the first way and the second way. You can actually send the space to another send bus channel and put another distortion, put some compression EQ to bring out that uh, middle frequency uh, to create more warmth and poke out those middle frequencies in normal earphones. But that's about it. That's how you kind of mix the sub bases that's how i mix sub bases okie dokie guys that about wraps it up for this video i hope you learned something out of this if you like this video consider subscribing give me a thumbs up also don't forget to press the notification bell to stay updated with my new releases if you have any questions comment down below again and i'll be happy to get back to you thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one cheers